the Typhoon 2 is one of the few ships that I don't really like to mess with. This ship is known to have the best missile damage application in the whole game, and the Typhoon 2 is... Well, it used to be uh, a cheaper option to the Bargast, although I think the Typhoon 2 is still a better investment than the Bargast, because it doesn't cost like 15 billion, which, you know, uh, is very helpful for the, for the wallet. But today, uh, we'll be taking a look at this ship's performance. I'm very curious to see how much the Typhoon 2 has been buffed. Now, skill-wise, the Typhoon 2 is still the same, it is the only tier 10 battleship that doesn't have any advanced skill requirements, so you don't have to have the advanced skills in order to take the full advantage of this ship. And I think that is very, very important. It's very easy to skill into this ship. The Typhoon 2 has 8 high slots, about the same uh, high slots as the Space Pan, although the Space Pan has uh, 5 medium and 5 low slots. The one thing uh, that is very good about the Typhoon 2 is its speed. It's the one of the fastest battleships in the game. Not as fast as the Nestor, but it's much faster than the Macariel, and it is much faster than the vast majority of the other battleships. Now, uh, I'm quickly looking at all of the skill requirements for all of the tier 10 battleships because I'm 100% sure that no other tier 10 battleship has the normal basic skill requirements for the ship bonuses. And again, uh, this is something that is unique to the Typhoon, and uh, I believe that's one of the more awesome aspects of the ship. The Typhoon, the tier 9 one and the tier 10 one have basically the same skill requirements for the bonuses, and I find that really awesome, honestly. Two of the most player-friendly ships in the game. And this is one of the reasons why the Typhoon is so, so popular. Now, let's take a look at the build. So this build is an old one. Uh, this build can be used for long-range PvP, can be used for low-sec total emissions, 197 km missile range. That has been increased significantly and when i think about it now the typhoon 2 has the same stats that the space pen had before the big update with the skills and before the balance patch so now if you have the typhoon 2 you basically have the space pen before the new skills and before the new balance patch have been introduced which is awesome, because a ship with this performance costed, or still costs about 15 billion. So, uh, yeah, your Typhoon 2 has been buffed significantly. Now as for the Nano Core, in this video I'll be using the ship without a Nano Core, but you have, a, you have a lot of options for the Nano Core on this ship. You can choose between missile damage and uh, flight velocity, I think the flight velocity and uh, overall missile damage are the two main traits for this ship. The tank is not really that impressive on the Typhoon. The Typhoon 2 is built to be more of a kite long range and a speed tank. This is one of the battleships ships that can speed tank quite easily. Very interesting. And now on to the rigs. So I will show you a cheap option and I will show you the more expensive option. Now last time I talked about the missiles and drones benefiting a lot from the integration rigs and well the first build here has integration rigs i like to use them on the on the missile at least on the missile ships at least because you can enhance the dps the the alpha damage the speed of the missiles and the range of the missiles we have a lot of options so the integration rigs work really well on missiles and drones however later i will show you a cheaper option because i know that a lot of you guys can't afford uh, such a build, so uh, of course I will show you a cheaper option as well. Now as for the implants, you have the tactical missiles and the warhead charge. The tactical missiles are good for PvP, 
although they also can be used for PvE because they give a very nice damage boost, although the damage boost is lasting for about 60 seconds uh, and after that you have a cooldown. My favorite missile implant is the Warhead Charge because you have a constant damage output, although with this implant you also get extra points, so for PvP this one is definitely going to be very interesting. The level that I recommend that you get for this implant is level 15 or level 30. Level 30 if you really like the implant or the ship, but in most cases for all implants, level 15, level 20 is already more than enough and at level 20 I think it costs about 5 to 7 billion. After that the price goes up a lot, so cost effective level is about I'm 15 to 20. If you really want to, uh, if you really like the ship, then level 30 is uh, the level that I would say uh, to go for. But in my case, most of my implants are on level 15. Only the barrage implant is on level 33. And I like to say that I got scammed for the three levels above 30 because there is basically not much, uh, not much improvement. Okay. Now let's see the active stats. So this build can be used in low sec for a very long range kite with a micro warp drive. The tank is not going to be the best. After all, uh, this is a sniper build, long range build. 2.1 km per second is the micro warp drive speed. I'm very satisfied with that. Although with without the uh, general unit it goes about 1.9 km per second. The speed has been nerfed on most ships because now the triple auxiliary, uh, the triple auxiliary thruster uh, rig setup has a penalty, a bigger penalty than before and because of that the maximum speed is now reduced. The DPS is looking really nice, of course this is with the implant active. 5340.59 DPS with the implant active, that's, that's a lot of DPS and that's also pretty good range and very decent alpha. 11 km per second is the speed of the missiles. The stats would be about the same, uh, just a little bit lower if you have the implant on level 15 and level 30, but the idea behind this build and the, ta the tactic remains the same. Now let me jump on the warhead charge. Again this implant is one of my favorites, it is so much fun to use. And I have the implant on level 15 I think, uh, on my, on the live, on the live server. And uh, I rarely use it, I mostly fly the turret chips nowadays, but when I take the space pen out, I use this implant and it does work really, really well. Doesn't have to be level level 45, level 15 or level 30 is more than enough. Again, that can be applied to all of the all of the implants. So, uh, implant is act activated. 2,270.94 DPS. Okay, that's that's okay. Same build as before. Let's undock and let me show you the active stats. Undocking. The speed will be the same. In the long range mode, I have 256 kilometers range. That's actually terrifying. Okay. With the precision mode, the damage application will be improved, but the DPS will be reduced. 197 km, 96.46 meters, okay. With the DPS mode, 2809.35, 9.1 km per second is the missile speed. With the first ballistic control, 3.4000 DPS. With the second ballistic control, 4059.40 DPS, pretty solid. There is a again a significant boost in performance from the from the skills, and the the missiles have have really been improved. 
a lot and I really do like that. The bombers are also very fun now. I actually have a bomber that I plan to use for PvP. Especially when they add the bomb launchers. Oh man. When they add the bomb launchers, yeah, I'll be all over no sec with a bomber. Dropping bombs on everything I see. It's going to be fun. Undocking. And now with the rapid missiles. Now the Typhoon 2 is amazing with rapid missiles. Can wreck frigates, can wreck cruisers. It wrecks basically everything. It can also be used against battleships. Against, against battleships, I would recommend that you use torpedo launchers. 86.83 km missile range with the implants, with the long range modes. The application is also looking pretty good. The DPS is also really, really good. And now with the precision mode, 40.92 meter explosion radius, which honestly is a good improvement. Used to be about 60 meters before, now it's 40. At, at least it, wa it was about, uh, I think it was about 60, perhaps even more. There's definitely a big improvement uh, in the application. 2586 with the DPS mode and now with the ballistic controls. The DPS is 3.1000 with the first and with the second one. 3733.33 DPS. I'm pretty happy with this result. After all, these are rapid missiles designed to shoot the smaller targets. The Typhoon 2 and the Typhoon are two of the best uh, best battleships to use against smaller targets. So you can actually make this thing lock small things pretty quickly. So if you like a battleship to hunt cruisers and battle cruisers, the Typhoon is definitely the way to go. That's at least what I have imagined and uh, all of my friends use this ship with the exact same build. Undocking. So, uh, let me show you the DPS with the other implant active. Same build, same rigs, just a different implant. 2734.84 DPS with a secondary attribute 3589.23 with the first ballistic control 4.1000 and with the second one 4,108.54 DPS, which is pretty solid for rapid missiles. Not many cruisers, uh, not many cruisers, frigates, and interceptors will be uh, lasting for a very long time against that type of DPS. And now, with the torpedo launchers, again, torpedo launchers are designed again to be used against big boats, battle cruisers, battle ships, cattle ships, you know, things like that. Don't use torpedoes against fast cruisers, don't use torpedoes against frigates. Uh, their damage application is not going to be that good. Even on a Typhoon 2, your damage will not be uh, that good against those small ships. But against big ships, it will do a lot of damage. 3.4000 DPS with the primary attribute, 4.3000 DPS with the secondary attribute. With the ballistic control, 5.2000 DPS with the second ballistic control 6,251.60 at 40.26 kilometers actually a pretty good range on the torpedoes the, the range feels like it has been doubled and I really do like that you can basically use the long range disruptor and you can technically kite with the torpedoes at 35 kilometers 50.33 kilometers uh, with the long range mode with the other implant with the precision mode 132 meter is the explosion radius vastly improved with the explosive missiles 3278.88 dps with the first ballistic control 4003.14 with the second ballistic control 4,746.96 DPS. So again, really, really solid DPS. This is going to be sustained DPS as well. 38 kilometer is the range, and I'm really happy with that. Okay, let me dock and let me show you 
the cheaper build. Now, since the Typhoon 2 already has really good damage replication by default, the best damage replication out of all the missile battleships in the game, you can technically uh, go and uh, use the triple loading bay accelerator setup for maximum possible paper DPS. However, you can do a lot of different combinations, you can improve the missile speed, you can further improve the damage application, you can also uh, improve the range. There is a lot of uh, options out there, and this is why uh, I really like to use the integration rigs on this thing, because you can combine all that into one rig and uh, the missile Unlock. stats all go up. And that's why the integration mix are so good to be to be used with missile ships because the missiles really do benefit uh, from from them. Not really going to benefit for maximum DPS. For maximum DPS, you go with the classic rigs. But if you want to improve all the parameters of the missiles, then integration rigs are definitely the way to go. And now, uh, since I have removed the integrations. Now the other stats will definitely go down, less range, less explosion velocity, less speed, but the DPS is definitely, it feels like it went up a little bit. You can compensate uh, for the lack of range, for the lower range or for the lower damage application with the implant, but it should not be a big issue. 3.5 thousand with the explosive missiles. 4,469.80 DPS with one ballistic control and with the second one 5,183.80 DPS, which honestly is a bit better a bit better paper DPS, but for missiles paper DPS isn't uh, the, you know, isn't the most important aspect the application on missiles is the most important parameter as well as speed basically all the parameters are important now, this is a PvP build. I basically use a build like this on most of my ships nowadays. In the medium slots we can do the triple scrambler and one web setup, but again, you can use any uh, any module that you think will work the best. In my case, triple scramblers and a web is the way to go. And now, uh, I have swapped the implants. Let's undock and let's take a look at the maximum DPS. Undock. This is a hit and run type of build basically when you land on the target you aim to kill the target as quickly as possible this is how i use the space pen although sometimes i also snipe with the space pen it really depends on the target and on the situation but i really do like that the typhoon 2 is now performing like a space pen a ship that costs 10 times more and this is some very nasty DPS now, 7,000, 7.4,000, and with the last policy control, 8,265.51 DPS. This has been massively improved since I tried this ship out last time. It, it really feels much, much better. And you know, one, one aspect of this ship that I like a lot more over the space pen is its speed. The space pen, it's not slow but this thing is much faster and with a better setup, with a better nano core and with a better general unit, you can make this thing go ab about 3000 meters per second the Typhoon is a really fast ship, after all it is a Mimata ship so that is to be expected and now with the other implant 4.7 uh, 4 5.6000 and with the third ballistic control 6,266.89 although in PvP I activate all of them at the same time to quickly burn down the target and then to warp away I mean most of you know uh, our tactics that we use in combat highly effective and highly lethal and now you can also do the rapid missile build with this build you can freely engage frigates Cruisers, battle cruisers, even battleships. Although against battleships, I would recommend that you use torpedo launchers for the extra DPS. On battleships, you will apply all the DPS. But on the smaller ships, you want to have the 
advantage in the damage application and the Typhoon 2 luckily does have amazing application so you will be wrecking uh, small ships with uh, with this thing I know based on my personal experience with the Ortus it, I tackled one Typhoon 2 with the Ortus and never again that thing did like a 15,000 hit on my ship that was a, a long time ago and I warped out in hull basically and since then, uh, I grew to really respect the Typhoon 2. It is a very, very dangerous ship. Now you can do the tank build with dual adaptives. You can also do uh, this build with extra missile application and range with the missile guidance computer. Also a very interesting thing to use. And let me just show you the range with the guidance computer. Again, you don't I'm have to use a guidance computer, but in some cases it's going to be uh, very helpful. The main nemesis of missile ships are ships that have a guidance disruptor bonus, like the Blackbird, Blackbird cover tops. These are the ships that you should be careful around because they have a bonus on the guidance disruptors and they can indeed cripple the missile performance of your ship. Just like the RB does the same thing on turrets. 66.46 km and 45.9 meter is the explosion radius. And now with the you know, with the module active, 33.69 and 96.49 km. So even if you're tackled from 100 km, you can hit the target. So it's not a big problem. And the stats look really, really good. I'm very happy with the Typhoon 2 so far, a very fun ship, a very awesome ship, Docking I have to, have to mention that because this ship is really awesome. Now a PVE high sec only build is something like this, quad ability controls, one adaptive, one booster, dual Nosferatos, a web and a scrambler. With this build uh, you are capacitor or stable, you have some decent DPS and you will also have decent range. You can use the same build with the cruise missiles if you prefer the long range combat. Undone. Although with rapid missiles you can also do the same thing at about 40 60 kilometers, 40 to 60 kilometers because most of the enemy ships will not have enough uh, range to uh, to hit you. And you can also do an armor tank with the same idea if you are in Amar space. After all, Mimata ships can do both shields and they can do both armor. Depending depends on what space you're at. But in my case here, Galante space, I want to have good shield stats because Relevance are easier to tank on shield than armor. And the DPS on this thing is also really good. 5.3 thousand should be really solid and now it's time to take the typhoon 2 for a for a little ride but before that i almost forgot to show you the active stats of the tactical missile implant 3.3 thousand 4.1 thousand with the secondary active 5.1 thousand with the first place control, 6060.38, 6,746, 7,099.28 DPS. Th this is actually really good, uh, although this is with the implant on level 45. If you have the implant on level 15 or 30, the DPS will be a little bit lower, but the damage boost will be noticeable. Okay, well, now I think it's time to take the Typhoon for a spin and let's see how this little boat will perform. Now, I have been saying for a very long time that uh, I will buy a Typhoon 2 for PvP and, well, unfortunately uh, I still haven't bought this ship. I actually bought a space van by, by accident, so uh, yeah, that well, happened unfortunately. So. I still do plan to fight the Typhoon 2 for PvP, and uh, as you all know me, uh, I like to 
I like to put my ideas to the real test and so far all the ships that I tried out and tested out uh, have been performing just the way I have imagined and I, I have to say I'm very very happy that that's the case because a lot of you guys out there are, are telling me that uh, that there are fits out there uh, that are just horrible and uh, my my job is to uh, to show good builds and uh, at least to show you what I'm losing. So far, it's been working really well. I've no, I haven't had any issues uh, with any of the builds that I had. At least not uh, not any issues that I haven't already tackled, but. But so far, I have been personally really happy with the with the results and performance on on all of my ships. I would say. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me how do I come up with the with the idea for, let's say, a tank build or something similar. Well, I usually look at the ship skills. And then I basically uh, base the build around the ship skills. And sometimes I take inspiration from the builds in EVE Online. I mean, 90% of the builds that I show you here are basically Enemy based on detected. EVE Online builds that, uh, that I know work. We're in some cases, uh, they are the exact same build from EVE Online when the module slots allow that because, you know, the medium and high slots in the two games are a bit different. Some ships have more slots here, some ships have more slots there, and things attack. like that. But in most cases, the the idea is about the I would say about the same, and the ship performance in the end is also I, I would say about the same. In some cases, the performance in this game is a bit more extreme, based on just how the numbers work although in the grand scale of things it is about the same so I'm not really uh, worried about that one thing that uh, I wish though is that the implants have the passive effect only it would be a much better experience if the implants did not have any passive mode but if the implants did not have any active mode my apologies but you know uh, it is what it is. We will see what they will do in the in the future. So far, it seems like they have been listening to what I've been telling them. So, so yeah, uh, there is still there is still time to to do the to change the implants to be more fair, I guess. So, uh, the performance of this ship has been really good so far. I'm using the build in the designed environment this this time. Usually, usually I just get the ship in low sec to show you what happens if the ship is pushed to the limit a little bit. But in this case, I use the Typhoon 2 with the high sec build in high sec. This is basically what's what I designed it to do, and uh, so far the build does does work really well. I really do like the the uh, DPS and rate of fire on this thing it's been working really well and I got no complaints Enemy about that so far We're under now one attack. thing that I would I would improve well We're that's, under that's a tough attack. question because the capacitor is stable the well the speed is okay you don't need an afterburner on this ship in high sec some ships do we need an afterburner in high sec, like the space pan, although it's not really necessary, but you know, uh, just to be safe, an afterburner on, on the space pan is actually a good idea. But uh, on the Typhoon 2, it's not really a necessary to use one because the ship is already pretty good, it's already fast, and the capacitor on the Typhoon 2 feels better than the capacitor on the space pan. I mean. The model ships are not really known for their capacitor performance, to be honest. The model ships have 
had actually one of the worst capacitors in the game and the capacitors on these ships has uh, been nerfed actually. Now not directly nerfed but back when they changed how the micro warp drift works when they have uh, improved the cycle time basically when they sped up the cycle speed of the micro warp drift they basically increased the power usage from the micro from the micro warp drift itself so the capacitor on the Ortus for example did suffer a lot and uh, the capacitor went from being well, went from being barely good it went from be it went to be uh, bad so uh, that's what happened but since then I think they have buffed them a, a little bit so now the capacitor issue is not as bad as it used to be but it's still you know don't expect a very good capacitor performance out of mortal ships now the Typhoon 2 here is so far performing really good I'm not really uh, complaining about anything on this ship actually it's, I'm 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 satisfied with it. Uh, so far, the performance is flawless. That's what I have to say about the about the Typhoon 2. Now, the the question: What is better? I mean, a few guys ask me this all the time. Basically, what is better, a Raven Striker or a Typhoon 2? Now, it's I think a bit unfair to. Uh, to say one ship is better than the other because uh, the Typhoon 2 is good at one thing while the Raven Stacker is uh, good at uh, the other thing basically the Typhoon 2 has good speed but bad tank and good application while the Raven Stacker has amazing paper DPS it's tanky so the Typhoon 2 is good against small targets while the Raven Stacker is good at We're big targets that's basically how I view them and uh, I have a lot of you guys telling me that you use the Raven yeah, striker in NoSec for anomalies in uh, in null space basically and that you get better ticks than the Typhoon 2 and then We're at the same attack. time uh, I have some of you guys telling me that the Typhoon 2 that you use outperformed your Raven striker so I think in the end it really depends on the build, depends on the situation, depends on the skills but I don't really like to say that one ship is better than the other ship. Uh, both of them are good for their respective purpose and both of them are fantastic ships if you uh, give them the right builds with the right skills. I flew all the ships in game and I found a purpose for literally every ship that there is. So uh, I think that's how, how it works at the moment. I find the Raven Striker excellent for for fleets for uh, for a tank build because that thing can be a brick. While the Typhoon is good for a more mobile way of playing, for a more active way of playing, basically with the micro warp drift and flying around while avoiding all damage. Both ships are good, and I like both of them. And uh, if you like the Raven Striker, excellent. I mean. It is the most important thing is that you enjoy the ship and that you have fun flying. Doesn't matter what ship you fly, if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. I actually have plans to fight the Raven Striker, although I just never had the, never really had the time to to buy one. I usually just stick with the ships I have, but from time to time I also attack. like to to change things a little bit. And currently. Well, uh, something that I'm doing for, the, for the, one of the next videos. I'm trying to We're assemble some solo PvP, some solo hunting at moment. You all know how solo hunting goes nowadays. Stabs here, stabs there. Voyage core here, voyage core there. Porcelain core there. On this syllable, on that syllable. So yeah, a uh, bit, bit difficult to uh, get proper solo action the old school way. Uh, without having like 80 ships just warp away from your RB or from your Stabber too. But you know, I have some, I have some very nice skills that I will show you in one of the next videos. A PvP part is on the way. Well then, um, my impressions on the Typhoon 2 so far. Honestly, amazing ship. It's been buffed. You can. 
you can notice the damage increase uh, it's there the damage boost it's very significant and it's very i mean significant it's very notable uh definitely has that weight to it that uh is going to make flying the ship a bit more well i i guess it's going to make flying the ship a bit more fun i mean can you imagine the ship that had that already had like the best missile damage application in the game uh, getting a buff on missile damage application yeah, that's wild isn't it? Uh, this thing out of all missile ships i believe that the typhoon 2 will benefit the most because it's basically a buff on top of a buff so uh, this thing will Enemy definitely perform really really well and the last wave they spawned right next to me as usual but don't worry the ship can tank that without problem it has enough dps to burn all the ships down as well so uh i would say one of the no a lot of uh, yeah all of players say that this a for balance patch had like two parts a balance patch that's that's been introduced uh with some new skills which i find a very interesting way basically a two-part balance the first balance part was when the skills have been released and the second part has been in april so uh, that's how they did it uh, this, this time around and more micro patches with balance are definitely up ahead again i, I mentioned this like a million times uh, the drone bombs have to be nerfed i believe they will be nerfed in just a matter of time now so that's the next big thing that I expect to happen. And well, uh, so far I did really like the changes in the nerfs. I'm very glad that the barrage implant has been nerfed. It wasn't it wasn't nerfed as much as I wanted to be nerfed, but it's definitely nerfed and. Uh, I believe that they'll nerf even more implants in the future and I still hope that the uh, warp core stabs get nerfed because man the game used to be so much more fun ba back then when you didn't have to have like 70 stabs just to just have a chance to hold someone but you know occasionally I do get a very 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 good fight with uh, with a non stabbed ship so uh, the Typhoon 2, a monster. This thing is amazing. And if you're thinking about buying this ship, I would say go ahead. It's uh, you will definitely enjoy the Typhoon 2 after this buff on the missiles. Warp drive the active. best missile application in the game on one of the most, one of the I would say more cheaper ships. And it's also extremely easy to skill into a typhoon too so with that being said hope that you guys enjoyed if you would like to support me feel free to like and subscribe and with that being said stay safe fly safe and i'll see you next time